Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to look into chapter 2 which is Java building blocks uh, of the book OCP Java um, SE 11 complete study guide and we will be covering the very first subtopic which is creating objects. So the agenda for this session will be we will look into the introduction of constructors. We will see how to read and write member variables. We will then look into the initializer blocks and then move on to code execution order with the constructor and initialization block. Let's get started with the very first topic which is constructors. So for this topic I will be creating a class called person.java which will represent a real uh, person. So that person.java will have a variable called name. This variable will contain the name of the person. I will also write a constructor of the class and I will write another class called main.java. This main.java class will have the main method which is the entry point of the program and in the main method we will create an object of person. So to use any class in the programmatic way we have to create the object in the heap memory. There are certain exceptions but we will look into those exceptions later on but for now just think of it as if we have to use any class we have to create an object and the keyword that we use to create the object is called new. So as soon as Java sees new and then it knows that it needs to create the class of that type into the memory and with this statement we are also telling Java that once you create the object in the memory you create a variable and that variable should point to that object. Now, now that variable is the medium how we will be always accessing that object. Let's jump on to the terminal and uh, write the code. So I'm creating a person class. This class has a variable called name which is of type string. We will look into uh, types in detail more but uh, for now string is a type where we can store the sequence of characters and this class let's also create a constructor and in the constructor let me set the name to John. Now let me write a main class. The reason I have written the main class separately is just for the simplicity sake. When I started uh, learning Java, I used to get very confused when the main class was in the same class as the demonstration. So that's why I wanted to keep things uh, uh, simple. I'll keep them separate. But uh, for the main method, we don't need a main class. We could actually keep the main method in person.java, which we will do in the future examples. But for this example, I have chosen to create a main, separate main class and that main class will be using the person's object. So we are declaring a p variable of type person and then equals new person. Let's print the name of the person which is we'll do p dot and then name. Let's compile the both the Java classes and I will run it as Java main and the John is printed. So this value is coming from the constructor where we have set the values. So constructors are the way where we could initialize different variables. Constructors will be called when an object is created. Let me also put a print statement so that uh, we know what exactly is happening in the code flow. Compiling the code again and now running it. So now as you see we do see the print statement that we just wrote in the constructor. Let's jump on the slide and dissect the whole code flow line by line. So we have our main class there and the 
person class and in the bottom screenshot we have the snapshot of the screen where I ran the program. So as you know we when the program starts it will start from the main method and then it executes the very first executable line which is person p is equal to new person. Now as soon as Java sees new and a class name it knows that it needs to call the constructor of that class. So the control goes to the constructor of the class and in this case we have written a print statement. So as soon as that's executed we print it on the screen and as the next line we are assigning a value to the name. So we are naming a person in this scenario. Now the control goes back to the main method because now we already have an object created. Program now creates a variable and points it to the object and we can use this variable to access that object. In this case what we have done in the next line is we have printed the name of the variable. So with the, with the help of the variable p it's going to that object in the memory and getting the name of the person and in here we are simply printing it and as soon as that statement is executed we print John and then the program ends. So a couple of key points that needs to be kept in mind for constructors. So the constructor name has to exactly match the name of the class. In our case we had the class name called as person so the constructor name has to be person and it is case sensitive so it has to be even of the same case. The second bit to remember about constructors are that they do not return any value. So they do look very similar to method but they do not return anything. Their whole purpose is to create an object in the memory and also to do the initialization stuff. Let me jump back on the terminal and demonstrate the difference between a constructor and a method. So let me first write a method and then I'll explain what exactly I am doing. So in this case I have created a method and the name of the method is same as the name of the class which also makes it same as name of the constructor. Um, the main distinguishing feature, the way you would know that it's a method is from the return type. In this case, the return type void tells me that it's a method. And in this method, what I have done is I have put a print statement just so that to get a feedback when I run the program and I have overwritten the name of the person to Smith from John. So. So when, a, when an object is created, when we do a new person, then the constructor will be called. So even though the method looks like a constructor, even though it has the same name, but a method will never be called when we do a new and then the name of the object. Now let me jump back to the main class as well and uh, let me explicitly call the method just to demonstrate you how exactly a method call will look like. So if we have to call the method person, so we would use the variable p and then dot and then the name of the method. In this case it's person. So now the method will be called. But remember that we are not creating an object. The object is already created. We are just calling the person method on the person object. And uh, just uh, for the sake of it let me put a print statement and print the name print the new name so now if i quit compile and run the program so you will see first the control went to setting the name in the constructor so that's what we printed and then we have printed the name in the main method so which is john now and then it goes to the method when we did p.person we explicitly call the method and now the name has been overwritten to Smith. So pay a very close attention on to the names of the methods as well. So make sure that 
you know the difference between a method and a constructor. Another key point to remember is that default or no argument constructor is provided by the compiler if we don't write it. So let me take a step back. Uh, so the default constructor is a constructor which does not have any parameters in between the parentheses. So that's called a default constructor. We will see, we'll see more about the other overloaded constructors in the later section. But for now, remember that if there isn't anything in the parameters, that's called a default constructor. And constructors are not mandatory. We usually only write them if we really want to do some logic during the creation of the object. So if we don't need any special logic, we just don't write the extra code. And if we don't write a constructor, the compiler will put a constructor when compiling the code for us. And, and it puts a default constructor and, it all, and that constructor doesn't do anything. It doesn't initialize anything. It doesn't have any print statement. So that constructor is empty. So, um, so a point to remember is constructors are not mandatory. If we don't write it, compilers provide it. Now let's move on to our next topic, which is reading and writing the variables. So in the previous uh, example, we have already seen how we can initialize a variable in a constructor. I want to show you how, what are the different ways to do it because we will need this uh, concept for the next uh, example or the next topic that we will be discussing. So first, let me clear off the constructor from person and also the method as we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to change the name variable to full name. And I'm going to create a variable called first name and assigning a value John. And I'm creating a second variable called last name. I'll assign the value of Smith. And also what I'm doing is for the full name, I am using the first name variable and then concatenating. So the plus sign is used for concatenation and then putting a space in between and then a last name. So the bit that I want to demonstrate here is that we don't always have to initialize the variables in the constructor. We can actually do where we have defined it. Now let me jump into the main class. So I have cleared the other bits from the class and we only have the person creation statement. So I am going to put a couple of print statements. So we will print the first name. We let me print the last name and also let me print the full name. And I'll compile the code and we will run it. So as you see, we have John as a first name, Smith as a last name and John Smith as the full name. So we have done the writing of the variable in the person.java class and we have done the reading of the variable in the main method. So this is how we would read and write the variables. Now moving on to the next topic, which is instance initializer block. Um, to understand this, first let's see what's a code block. So anything that goes in between the curly braces is called as a code block. So the methods we write, they do have a curly braces. They are the code blocks. The classes we write, they have a curly braces. They, they are a code block and then the code blocks can exist on their own. So let me show you an example. So I have a class, I have a main method and then a couple of code blocks. Pause the video for some time. Take a look at the code and tell me how many code blocks do you find? So in this code, so there are in total four code blocks. So we have a code block in the main method in which the prints, we just have a print statement. The second code block is outside of the method and it also has a print statement. The third code block is the main method itself. So, so you notice we have a curly braces in the main method. So that's a code block as well. And the fourth and the last code block is the whole class. So we have a curly braces in the class definition. So that's a, another code block. The code blocks that are outside of the method are called instance initializer blocks. 
So these are a special type of code blocks and these are called before the constructor code is called. So let's look at this example. So this is a person class. There are a couple of changes that I have done from the previous person class that we just saw. The very first change that you will notice is I have put the main method within the person class. As I have mentioned that the main method doesn't have to be in the main class. It can actually be in anywhere really. It just needs a class and it just tells where to start the program. So, do, so don't get confused. You will see these kind of examples in the exam a lot. So I wanted to make you familiar with the, both the ways of writing the code. The second thing that I have changed is I have added a new initializer code block. In this case, which is overwriting the name to Stu. To save the space, I have removed the new line after the curly brace and before the curly braces so that the code looks compact. You should expect to see the code in this format in the exam. So train your eyes in such a way that you are able to distinguish the code blocks and the structure of the program. So let's look into the code flow. So when the program starts, it starts from the main method and then it executes the very first line which is person p is equal to new person and as soon as the java sees new person we have already seen it tries to create the new object in the memory when it creates the new object there is a certain sequence it follows and the sequence is first of all it creates a variable called name and assigns the value of it as john let's mark it as uh, step number one. After that, if there is any initializer block, then it executes that. In this case, we are setting the name to Stu. Let's mark it as step two. And once that's done, then it would run the constructor where we are overwriting the name to Smith. Let's mark it as step three. So once that's done, the control comes back it comes back to the main method and then we print the name and in this case the name will be smith because smith is the last overwriting that happened so we the name was first john then Stu, and then smith so smith will be persisted john and Stu are thrown away because we overwrote the code so this sequence is very important so make sure that you understand you will see questions in the exam in which they will ask you the output of the program so to know the output you need to know the sequence in which the program runs. Now I have modified that same program a little bit more. So I have moved the initializer code block from the bottom of the program to the top. Usually when we write a class, the ordering of the elements, the way we write them in the class does not matter. However, they, are, they do matter when it comes to initializer block. So in this case, I have moved the name, uh, the initializer block above the name declaration. So when the program will run, it will print John because it just ignores the code block that is above the name declaration. Now let's say instead of setting, we are getting the name and we are getting the name and that also happens before we have declared it. In this case, the program won't even compile. And the error that we will see will say illegal forward reference, uh, which essentially means that you are trying to print name, but I don't know what name is because it hasn't been declared. So we are doing forward referencing in this case. So in the exam, there might be a trick questions where they might ask you what would be the output, and then they might have the initializer block on top of the variable declaration. In this case, the correct answer is that the code wouldn't compile. So there is no output as such. So that's uh, pretty much it for this part. Thank you so much for being with me. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button and do subscribe it for my future videos and I will be uploading more of chapter two and the following chapters in the upcoming weeks. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video.